Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. It's 8.04 p.m. here on Wednesday evening. And uh, we have a mess down south, but, uh, you know, the good thing is we're under mostly clear skies up here, and it's not affecting us. Millions uh, affected down here with this major winter storm. Uh, uh, icing on the orders of three quarters of an inch to an inch in some places down to the south. Uh, just, uh, you know, the figure I heard today was 490,000 without power. So, and in this, you know, this is a major uh, historic winter uh, storm down there for the south. And then take a look at this on the back side of the system, too. You've got severe thunderstorm watches and even some tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings popping up. You know, we don't have to deal with this, and we're thankful that we don't have to deal with this, but uh, our, our luck is about to run out. It's not going to stay clear around here forever. We'll see mostly sunny skies tomorrow, but then beyond that, we've got what looks like could be a mess for this weekend. Let me throw our visible satellite here, and I know it's a little bit hard to see, but take a look at this little blob right out here. That's actually a low-pressure system. Uh, that's going to move sort of onshore here overnight tonight. And then as it does, it's going to get caught up in the jet stream and sort of take a dive our direction for uh, Friday. And that'll give us some accumulating snow chances in our region. Now, how much accumulating snow? Um, you know, it's a little bit up in the air on, uh, on how much it gives us. But uh, we'll go through the details and talk about that. All right. Tonight's video update being sponsored by uh, High Voltage Mobile DJ Service. You can give Nathan a call, 630-9465. Visit him on the web at djhighvoltage.com and tell him Southern Indiana Weather sent you. All right. Let's take a look at our in-depth forecast. And by the way, uh, I'm doing something brand new with this tonight. I'm starting a shorter version of the forecast as well, a video as well as a longer version. So of course this is the longer version. In this longer version I'm going to go uh, what you're used to with me going in very in-depth out to the next two weeks showing you what's in the models. Uh, but at the shorter version uh, you can check that out if you want to as well. I'm going to try to stay. It was about five minutes this time uh, but I'm going to try to keep that between anywhere from three to five minutes on those daily small forecast videos just to give you an idea of what to expect. So if, if you like those and you're wanting a short shorter video. I encourage you to check that out. It'll be on our Facebook page posted for you as well. All right. And be sure to let us know if you like those because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to do those type of things if uh, see there's a need for them. Let's talk about our snow chances for Friday. All right. Here we are 7 a.m. on Friday. Nothing's come in yet. But by the time one o'clock Friday afternoon comes, you've got some decent accumulating snows, according to the GFS, over our area. Another little batch down to our south, but of course we're right here. And this could be, you know, up to two inches in some places. The good news is it's very quickly moving. By the time you get to 7 p.m., it's mostly gone. Temperatures are going to be right on the verge of the 30 to 32 degree mark. So could some of this stick to the roadways? Absolutely. But maybe not. It just sort of depends on how quickly we get up. And uh, we'll have to see. Beyond this system, then we have another system moving in. You can see here we are Saturday night at 7 p.m. Another decent little system moving down for Illinois. Sort of... Uh, uh, peters out, if you will, uh, by the time it gets over us. Maybe bring some lighter accumulations up to northern Indiana, but just more of a dusting for our area. We'll keep an eye on it and see how that happens. Uh, the GFS actually for this weekend doesn't give us a tremendous amount of snow, but you get the idea that there will be some. Uh, in general here, the first blue here is a two-inch swath, anywhere from a dusting to two inches in the area with this. Now, the Canadian goes absolutely hog wild on snow totals like it has a habit of doing sometimes, so uh, we'll disregard this sort of as an outlier right now. It goes anywhere from 2 to 5, maybe even up to close to 6 inches over parts of the area for us. This is a fast-moving uh, Alberta clipper, and these type of systems, uh, you know, you don't get 6 inches out of them generally unless it's just an overachiever. It could be an overachiever, but you don't get spotty. You don't get six inches in a huge swath like that. You get it more spotty in those kind of a situations. So I don't particularly like the look of the Canadian. I do like the placement of the Canadian. I do uh, agree with the GFS that it takes it more towards over us. But I don't like the snow totals here with the Canadian. I think this is a bit overdone. I do like the placement and the and the uh, the look to the GFS. And I think, and in general, uh, we'll say a trace to two inches at most is probably, I think, what we're looking at on Friday at this point. But we'll fine-tune those details. The NAM, the high-resolution NAM, just really quickly, is the outlier and gives us next to nothing uh, as far as that just a few snow showers. And if I were to put the high-resolution NAM's future radar in motion, here we go. We stay dry on Thursday. By the time you get to Friday, though, here you go, and, and you've got next to nothing. A little bit of rain for Kentucky, and then just some very spotty stuff moving in our area. And, of course, 
uh, that's why it gives us uh, just some very uh, light accumulations with it so right now that is an outlier I don't think that uh, we'll, we'll see whether this trends this way or not but uh, the NAM may end up playing catch up with that and, and I, I think for right now in general a trace to two inches looks pretty likely for what we're going to experience on Saturday uh, temperature wise on Saturday I, I still think that we're going to be uh, holding pretty good here uh, with uh, with the way the temperatures uh, will go all right temperatures on Friday uh, the GFS actually is a little colder than I'm forecasting it takes us up to the upper 20s some of the other models put us closer towards freezing so this is just to give you an idea of kind of the variance uh, I'm actually forecasting a high I think right around freezing but we'll get into that here in a minute all right so some accumulating snow chances for this weekend but it doesn't look like it's going to be anything huge after that though boy we've got a nice warm-up in store let me continue to put this into motion for us here by the time we come by the way Sunday will be a very nice day uh, with partly cloudy skies by the time you get into your Monday afternoon you've got a decent rain event potentially moving in for us and of course temperatures also warming up to the near 50 mark on, on Monday too so that's going to be a refreshing change with the rain of course that would melt anything that does fall over the weekend so to, and a lot of the ice and and crud that we've got around now this will help melt and wash away some of that too so i'm looking forward to this personally i'm getting a little sick of the uh the nasty ice and tripping and falling on it every time i go into my car i'm sure i'm not alone in that looks like we get a break from that though next week though as you hit into some rain you put this into motion we got some nice weather still coming for the week by the time your Wednesday comes around you've got a little bit of light rain potentially moving in there as well and then as we get on the a uh, little bit later as we go in towards day 10 and 9 and 10 we're looking at Friday at 1 in the afternoon we're looking at a very significant warm-up next Friday the 21st into the 22nd and we're looking at some heavy rain potential as well and of course as I've been informing you uh, for the past several videos we're also looking at the potential of some severe weather for that and uh, let me give you an idea of what I'm looking at here um, by the time you you get to uh, uh, 1 a.m. on the 22nd here Saturday uh, notice the cold fronts knocking on our doorstep and uh, let me just show you temperature wise uh, for Friday the 21st uh, at 1 in the afternoon you're already looking at 70 degrees in the Evansville metro area 67 in Honeyburg even the 61 degree range up in Indy you know you 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 don't get 60s and 70s around here in February without paying a significant price for it. so this is something um, this has been consistent if you've watched my forecast videos the past few days really the past four days it's been very consistent with a warm-up uh, you know it's taken us between the 60s to near 70 to the upper 50s but still a pretty significant warm-up and it's been significant with showing a severe weather threat severe weather parameters are also getting more impressive with time too so this is one that has my eye even as we go into the overnight hours we're still you know near 70 degrees by one in the morning that's that Friday night so this is an absolutely impressive system this far out we are 10 days away from it so there is uh, you know very minimal confidence that we're gonna have severe weather at this point but there's high confidence that I have that this is one that we need to watch keep an eye or eye on and see exactly what happens and let me show you the reason why let's just take a look at some of these severe weather parameters uh, you know I've when we've had severe weather before if you've watched my forecast videos I've showed you these before let me sort of go through these just to give you an idea of what we're expecting right now we're taking look at surface winds and this is for uh, one in the morning you got the cold front low pressure right up here you got a cold front knocking on our door moving in and you've got you know 15 to 20 knot winds uh, even at the surface you go up just uh, 4,000 feet up into the atmosphere and I want you to notice how quickly you go to uh, you know 60 knot 50 and, and 60 knot winds now if that's the case with that being you know only four or five thousand feet at the surface it's not going to take a thunderstorm much at all to be able to tap into that energy and you know typical thunderstorms around here in the summertime can go up as high as 40,000 feet uh, during the winter time a 20 to 30,000 feet thunderstorm uh, as far as how high the clouds go up is not uncommon well you know guess what whenever you're talking 50 and 60 knot winds only 4,000 feet up that's a lot of wind energy for that storm to feed off of so these storms could go severe pretty quickly in this type of a setup with with additional parameters involved here that you'll see um, but even if it didn't go severe I would not be surprised at all to see um, not just sustained winds but gusts um, you know 30 and 40 miles an hour potentially with this system uh, down here at the surface so it's going to be a very windy day regardless of how you look at it and uh, a 60 knot low level jet is very concerning to me if we go higher up into the atmosphere by the time you go about 18,000 feet up the winds are just absolutely 
a whipping continued and then we go up to the jet stream level about 30,000 feet or so this time of the year at what we call the 300 millibar level and you got very impressive winds up there as well so regardless plenty of wind energy to work with you notice we also have a very strong cold front to work with if we just take a look at the temperature gradient now here we are at one and starting to approach us a little bit more but you know if i were to put this forward in time a little bit more uh, just take a look at where this cold front is in the course of you know oh uh, as this approaches us uh, you know I don't know what is this, maybe a 50 mile swath here at most. You go from the 30s to the 60s. So as this moves towards us, again, this is a very, very strong cold front. Uh, so strong, you know, let's just take a look at uh, our instability factors. Uh, this is always um, what limits us on severe potential, especially during the winter. Um, but this time of the year, it doesn't take much instability to go severe. And we're looking at about maybe 250 units or so of instability. That's more than enough during the winter time to bring uh, some severe storms into play. So, again, something that we're going to have to watch. Take a look at the bulk shear, though. The bulk shear is just a measure of how much wind shear that we have in the atmosphere. Uh, and we're talking speed shear when we do here. The difference between winds here at the surface and 18,000 feet. And, uh, you know, we're looking at 40 and 50 knot wind differences is here so um, yeah that's pretty impressive and if you take a look at the crossover which is directional shear we're talking about the change in direction as you go up so uh, here you go at the surface with your red lines and we're more from the south at the surface we're from the west southwest up here you've got you know winds at the surface going this way and winds way up in the atmosphere going like this that supports rotating storms so absolutely tornadoes could be in play with this type of a setup uh, this would be a classic tornado outbreak kind of a setup, really, if this verified. Again, we're 10 days out, so, you know, this is, there's nothing set in stone here at this point, but we want to put ourselves on the alert because, uh, you know, this is something that we definitely want to keep an eye on. Plenty of, even if we don't get severe weather, plenty of flooding potential as well as we take a look at the amount of water that's coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, and you can just see a sort of being sucked up from the Gulf like a vacuum right up towards us. So even if we don't end up with severe weather, I think we'll see strong thunderstorms during this event and certainly some flooding potential as well. So this is one that we are going to want to keep an eye on. So again, we're taking a look at Friday the 21st, sometime in the afternoon or Saturday the 22nd into the overnight hours on Friday night at this point. We'll fine-tune that as it gets closer. Oftentimes as it gets closer, you know, the models are, will adjust these forward even by as much as a day uh, one way on either side. So um, just keep that in mind. And of course, as we get closer in time, we'll have more videos to update you guys on this. All right. Outside of that, if we continue on with uh, the play, you see a cool down coming our way again. Again, these blue lines are the colder weather. And uh, you see as the system moves out of our way, you get a little bit of a return to some colder weather. In fact, the GFS even puts some snow a couple of days later on the back side of the system. That's not uncommon, by the way. You remember the Henryville tornado that we experienced in March of uh, 2012, I believe it was? We had snow the next day even after that tornado. So, yeah, it's pretty uncommon whenever you have a winter type of setup like this to be able to have snow on the backsides of a severe weather outbreak, and that's what we're seeing in the models right now. So, again, this is just a heads up. This is not an official forecast. This is still you know, 10, 9, 10 days away, so, but one that we're going to have to watch for sure, all right, so accumulating snow possible this weekend, but then we get a little bit of a warm-up, if you go to southernindianaweather.com, you can get your updated seven-day forecast, remember you can also listen to our forecast on 101 Country WBDC, 1033thefix.com, on our uh, website as well, you can click uh, the, the buttons here and you'll be able to go to their websites and check them out. Give them a like on Facebook as well, if you will. 37 for your high on Thursday, mostly sunny skies. Beautiful weather, really, compared to the weather we have had. Chance of accumulating snow. I've not put any snow totals on this yet for the weekend, but really I'm thinking a trace up to two inches is what my gut is. I'll have my first snowfall map out probably tomorrow afternoon at the latest sometime. All right, we'll see. We'll see how those go. Um, but again, I'm not expecting this to be a big system, but we'll watch overnight with the trends in the models, and then we'll have an update in the morning. Chance of a little bit of accumulation, again, possible on Saturday. Again, I just don't think this is going to be a big threat this weekend. So uh, I know Friday is Valentine's Day, so if you got plans with your sweetie, just watch the forecast, you know, maybe make some alternative plans to just stay in and cook for your sweetie. Uh, you know, that's what I'm going to do. So that I think that could be, uh, you know, maybe a viable alternative in something like this. Then, take a look at this as we go forward in time. Partly cloudy and 38 on Sunday. You've got some rain to deal with on Monday, but the 50s return. And you've got three uh, nice days. And then beyond that, we may even see as much as 60 by next Thursday. We'll see whether that verifies or not. 
All right, that's it for tonight's video, folks. Uh, more of these updates to come for Southern Indiana weather. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great night.